Hey everybody, Raimi here, and today I'm going to talk about streaming. So what is streaming, why would you do it, and how do you do it? So, streaming is the ability to actually record what you're doing live and put it immediately on some kind of web service like YouTube or Twitch. So like if I wanted to create a video and have like a picture of me just doing something, like if I was cooking and I wanted to show someone how to cook, I could stream that live and while I was cooking, stream it. Um, if I was playing a video game, I could stream my game so that people could watch me play. If I wanted to show my kids doing something live, so think about it, streaming is live, live recording, live shooting. Okay, so that's what streaming is. Um, if you've watched any of my tutorials about like eSports or anything, you know how popular streaming is. I can go on to Twitch at any time of the day, 7 a.m. in the morning, and there will be like a million people watching people stream stuff live. Mostly all video games, that's the big popular thing, but people are also streaming, working out, um, how to fix things, all kinds of different things. Just streaming, watching people throughout their day. You know, we have this obsession with reality TV. Streaming is no different, except it's more about the computer. So that's what streaming is and why you would do it, because you have an interest in it, you like being on video, you think other people wanna see what you're doing. Um, and maybe you just want to try something new and learn about some technology, but it is a really fun thing to do and it's, it's, it is weird talking to a camera. So, you know, it's something you get used to and learn about. So what I want to do is I want to talk about, I want to talk a little bit about how you actually stream and things that you think about. Now, this is a high level overview. I'm not going to go into super detail about like how to set up your background or something like that. There are other videos that I've created that go into how to do that or like how to set up your camera or something. I'm gonna, but I'm gonna talk about some of the high level stuff like that so that you have an idea of where to start and what you need to do. All right, so at the most, let's start at the most basic level. Let's say I wanna stream, I want it to be really simple, simple as possible. All right, so the most basic and easy way to stream is that you pick a service, you have to find a streaming service. Where am I gonna stream this to? Most common places are YouTube and Twitch. I'm sure most of you know what YouTube are, is. If you're not a gamer, you might not know what Twitch is, but Twitch is a big game streaming service, but people stream all kinds of other things on there. Um, and Twitch is owned by Amazon, so it's not like just some random small little company. YouTube's owned by Google, Twitch is owned by Amazon. These are two huge streaming services. Both really great. So the most basic and easy way to stream you personally doing something, like let's say I wanted to stream, um, you know, me typing on my computer or me cooking. Simple, simple example. The most basic and easy way to do that would be to set up your, use your cell phone. Set up your cell phone. You have to get a connector. For example, I have a connector here. This connects my cell phone. And so I can actually connect this right to my desk, hold it, and it can video me streaming. I would sign into YouTube and I would press stream. It would record sound, it would record video. That is the most basic and easy way to record yourself doing something. Um, the next level up from that, which probably isn't even a next level, it's about the same, would be streaming from your computer. And that would involve, I'm not trying to stream my desktop, I'm just streaming watching me do something. That would be using the internal camera and internal mic on my computer, opening up YouTube and simply going to the go live. There's a little go live button on YouTube and pressing go live. It'll record from my camera, record my mic, and I can stream myself doing something. Now, that's the most highest, that's the easiest way to do it, but there's so much more to streaming and making video than that, a lot more. That's the most basic level, low quality, easiest way to do that. But let's say you want it to start to be better quality and let's say you wanna like stream your desktop. Like I do so many tutorials where I'm, you know, showing someone how to use a piece of software like Adobe Photoshop. What if that is your goal? How do you do that kind of stuff? Then how do you start to make your streams better? And wh what do you think about? And how do you make this stuff better? And, you know, so let's talk about that. All right. And this is really exciting. I, I love this topic because I love video. I love making video. I love dealing with this kind of technology. It's, I just have so much fun with it. So I want to show you guys it so that you can start to, you know, be able to do it for yourself. All right. So ways to improve quality. So first of all, going from 
a generic camera on your computer, the camera that comes with your computer is probably not very good. It's fine for like Skype, but it's not good for making quality professional video. You want to shoot in like, you know, 720p or 1080p, you need a good camera to do that. There are three kinds of cameras you can use. There are webcams, which you can buy separately, and that's totally what I recommend for streaming. I recommend people using a webcam. I really like the Logitech cams. You can find a good webcam for $50. That's all you need to spend on a good one that'll shoot high quality video. That's my best option. The other two options are an actual video camera or using an SLR camera. Um, and they both also shoot really high quality, but it's a lot harder to get them to stream. They're much better for like standalone shooting that you're gonna actually go and edit, not necessarily for streaming. So. I really, really, really like the webcam for streaming. It's the best option. So that's how I improve my video quality. But there's a lot more than that. Next, we have microphone. Again, the microphone on your computer isn't that great. So the two things I, I upgrade first are my camera and my microphone. You can buy a really good microphone for $100. I like the Blue Yeti microphones. They're my favorite. Um, they're around $100 a piece. I think they're great for streaming and recording. Um, having said that, you can find good quality, pretty cheap mics on Amazon for like $10 to $25. Um, I like the Blue Yeti a lot better. It's got better features and better quality, and there's much better ones than the Yeti. I just think it's a good middle entry level mic that you can find cheap ones that are like ten dollars on amazon that are going to be much better than your computer internal mic so if you're just trying to do this on a budget get one of those ten cheap ten dollar ones and use that because it will be better but if you want to invest a little bit you know 150 dollars you've got camera for 50 blue yeti mic for 100 those are my two recommendations for sound but sound and video make a huge huge difference okay then we have other things to start to consider. And it becomes more complicated as you do it more and more and want it to look better and better. There's a lot of different things you can do. So the next thing we wanna consider is lighting. Lighting is super important because you wanna be able to see what you're doing. You want it to look well. You don't want it to look like all blurry or grainy or like not being able, just dark or something like that. You wanna be able to see it. So you have to get some lights. There are so many different options for lighting and it really depends where you're shooting. Are you shooting outside, inside? What kind of lighting do you have? Let's just assume you're shooting inside and you have to buy some lights. Um, there are many different setups. You can buy one light. I've seen setups with two, three, five lights, all kinds of different lights. It really depends how, how you're doing it. So there are so many different options. I would tell you just to go on Amazon and price them, but you can buy lights for really, really cheap. You can buy lights on Amazon for cheap. You can go, one of the things I like to do is I like to go to Walmart and I like to buy the desk lamps. I can buy them for anywhere from seven to like $10. And I go buy a daylight or white light bulb for it and boom, I have a light. Sometimes those are too bright. If you buy like one of those and it's too bright, I just put a piece of wax paper over the actual light. I tape it and all of a sudden I have this nice soft white light, perfect for me. That's kind of a really cheap, easy way to get pretty good lighting. If you only have one light, they have tons of lights on Amazon that'll be great for just your face that you can set up but you have to think about lighting I always like to at least have one light shining on me and then one soft light coming in from the side and that gives me like be able to see my whole entire face a little bit of shadow and then if I have a background I'm gonna put some light on that as well but it all depends on my setup so you have to think about your setup and then play with the lighting for that specific setup there's no like one size necessarily fits all I know people that just have one nice soft light on their face and it looks perfect in their setup so it all depends what you're doing all right, then we start to think about backgrounds. Are you gonna use a green screen? Do you have some kind of background set up? Because you don't just wanna see like your laundry on the floor. You know, I did a whole video on backgrounds. Um, I've, I, you know, I've been through interviews where I've seen people during the interview, like just see their laundry in the background or like people on Skype or whatever. And you see like their house is just a mess in the background, like set up your background on purpose. You know, I, I usually use, I use a green screen for a lot of my videos and that's an option. You can buy a green screen for really cheap. You can buy a sheet on Amazon for like 20 to $30, really cheap and expensive to set up. So you can use a green screen, but you have to get a software to edit that. I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, or 
you just set up your home background. Like maybe it's just a wall. That's all you need is a wall and it's perfect. But if you have stuff back there, set it up. My background, I like to set it up with things that are about me. Like I have a lot of my paintings and some things that I like in my background so that people would be able to see that. It'd be at least entertaining for them to see my background. Whether or not they like it or are interested in it is a whole nother story. But what, if I like it, then it's good enough for my personal video. <laughs> But, you know, when I'm doing something professional, I try to make sure it's either in my office with like a bookshelf in the background or I'm using my green screen. Um, all right. Now we're at the harder parts. So I consider your webcam, your mic, your lighting and your background to be all like this, like external stuff that's pretty easy for you to control. You can spend easily spend two hundred dollars on a really beautiful home setup. To stream and record stuff and you don't have to do that because some people are just using their computers as I said they're cheap ways and more expensive I think if you had a budget of like 200 you could do like get really really nice equipment everything nice great stuff all right but then there are a few more parts that become a little more harder so the first one is software streaming software so you have to think about what am I streaming first of all? So like maybe you can just use your phone and you're just using YouTube. So like if I'm streaming myself just doing something um, without like not using my computer or desktop, I can probably just use YouTube and stream that way and I don't need to download or any software or have anything special. But let's say I want a screen, I want my desktop to be captured. Like I'm playing a game and I want my game to be captured. I want like my image up on the screen while I'm playing the game to all be there and be live, you know, for people to watch so that I can stream. So my options to do that are YouTube and Twitch. Those are the two most popular places I would stream that to. But I need software that allows me to stream to those services. So my personal favorite software to do this, and it's 100% free and open source, so that makes it even better, is a software called OBS. OBS, it's free, it works on the Mac, it works on PCs. It's great, I love it. Tons of professional streamers use it. So it's a, it's a great professional software. It's also super easy to set up. So I would download and install OBS. OBS works, you install it on your computer, um, you're able to say like, I want to record this game and you can set up your picture and there's all kinds of settings within the software that you have to play with and make it all set up, make it sure that it looks right. You can like move everything around on a screen. Great piece of software OBS. So that's my recommendation for streaming to YouTube or Twitch. You cannot stream to both services at the same time with OBS. If you want to stream to multiple services at one time, you there are some ways to do that and usually those involve paying monthly fees and there are some ways to do it. But in general, you usually pick one YouTube or Twitch and stream there and you use OBS to do it. So that's software. So boom, we've got software out of the way, right? Um, super simple. Okay, then we have to, then, you know, we make our selection. Do we want YouTube or Twitch? Which can be, you know, a headache for some people. They're not sure which to do. Sometimes what people do is they will stream to Twitch and then take their video, edit it, and then upload it to YouTube as like a standalone video rather than a stream. So that's another option as well. Okay, then we're at the hardest part. And I think all the rest is, I, I th think the first things like the webcam, the mic, the lighting, it's pretty easy. You got to think about, I think the software, getting it set up and learning it, you know, there's a little, it's, it's really easy to do, but obviously there's an adjustment, but I still think that's kind of easy. The hardest part is determining what content are you going to stream and actually getting people to watch your stream. Those are two big things that become very difficult. Okay. So content. So when you're, it, it depends what you're doing. Like, let's say you want to set up, as I used cooking before, and you want people to watch you cook. Maybe it's every night I cook dinner, I'm going to stream that. And so you have your content because it's you're cooking every night. If you're going to have stream playing a game, like I'm going to play Minecraft and every day or every night I'm going to stream Minecraft. And so you have your content right there. But one of the things you have to make, you and this takes practice, is you have to learn how to engage your audience while you're streaming. So you can't just sit there while you're streaming and say nothing. I mean, how boring is this? But notice how I'm still doing something, I'm bouncing. Cause I can't just sit still, I have major ADHD problems since I was born, I don't know what happened to me, but I have it. Um, so yeah, there's that. I, I just, I cannot sit still, you know? 
but you have to be able to do something. You got to engage your audience, whether it's making funny faces or wiggling or whatever it is you're doing. You have to make sure you know you're keeping your audience engaged. One of the ways to learn how to do that, watch professional streamers, watch what they do. Something I, I've learned that I really like to do is I like to listen to radio talk shows. Why? Because they don't even have a camera in front of them. They have to learn how to keep talking. They can't have pauses. They have to keep talking, keep their users engaged the whole entire time. Just imagine if you were listening to a radio show and just for two minutes, no one spoke. I mean, that'd be really, really weird. You know, so I like to do that as well. So there's lots of ways to practice, to practice content. And that's, this is a skill that you have to learn how to do and it, you slowly get better and better and better. All right, and then the ne next thing is getting, how do you get people, how do you get people to your stream? So if I'm streaming to YouTube, I have a YouTube channel link. And if I'm streaming to Twitch, I also have a Twitch channel link. So you have to tell people to watch it. That means tweeting, hey, I'm gonna be streaming today at this time, or making sure you have interesting content. Like if, I'm, if I was gonna stream League of Legends, League of Legends or Fortnite, if I go on, if I check Twitch right now, there's probably like 250,000 people streaming Fortnite right now, or 250,000 people watching other people play Fortnite, watching streams of it. What do you think the chances are of me going on there right now and getting any of those users? Pretty much none. Why? Because there are professional Fortnite streamers out there that people like to see that are entertaining, that have all kinds of content, that are doing really cool stuff. So why is someone going to come watch me? It's kind of like, you know, if I decided I want to make a home video and I try to put it next to like the blockbuster movie at the movie theater, like, and say, pick which one you want to watch. Like, no one's going to watch mine. They're all going to watch the go big, big blast blockbuster. So you have to find your niche. Like, what are people, what is it about you and what you're doing and your content that people are going to like to enjoy and want to see? You know, so you have to find out like where you fit in. Like, what do you love? What do you like to do? Like for me, I love technology. I've loved technology since I was, I don't know, three years old and I got like my first Atari. I've really, really loved technology. My whole career has been focused on it. So I can sit here and stream and make videos literally all day long about technology because I love it. And you have to love it because it gets, if you're trying to stream like consistently, like it gets boring and it's, it feels like a job sometimes and you, you have to really love it and enjoy it. So you have to find your passion, find your niche, and that's where you get your content and users from. Um, hopefully this has helped you out and given you some good ideas about what to stream and stuff. You know, I talked about the easy ways to do it using just your uh, a cell phone or like in YouTube or like your webcam that's on your com laptop or computer and your internal mic. Simple, easy, free. But then I talked about how to make it better. Like buy a nice $50 webcam and buy a nice microphone for anywhere from $20 to $100. Start to, you know, invest in some lighting and think about like your background. These are all really simple things you can do. Think about what your content is, whether you want to stream to Twitch or stream to YouTube. Like where do you think your user base, base fits in? Um, and then start thinking about like, what is, what is your niche and your content and how are you going to make this interesting and engage people and ask them questions and make it fun for them. Um, but that's streaming in a nutshell. That's a high level overview of what it is and how to do it. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.